God. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Yes, sir. In the Hebrew meaning, God is with us. Amen. Anybody glad God is with us? Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you, Minister Joan, for uh, the recognition of my 30th year in ministry. Really, it's really a little over 30. Uh, but uh, as you can see, most of that time I've spent with you. Uh, we're in our 28th year with this church. But we're glad you're here on this Lord's Day and this Advent season as we celebrate the coming of the greatest gift ever given uh, to mankind. I want you to grab your Bibles real quickly and uh, turn to Psalms 111. I need to acknowledge the fact that while I was gone the last couple of Sundays or at least going one Sunday in here, but didn't preach last Sunday. Uh, boy, that preaching team of mine, they were awesome. Joan, they act like the church was vacant, the way they were preaching. <laughs> Trying to take my job. Well, Dr. Sanders said, no, you can keep it. They say. But it, it's great to see my sons and my daughter growing in the Lord and it's, uh, you know, you can be around someone uh, and never really pick up some great tools and techniques uh, as you are growing in your own walk of God. And I can say that to Jackie and to Anthony and Quincy um, and uh, who, was, who am I missing? Derek, Derek. Yeah, and Derek and, of course, Pastor Tony and that are kind of the core of our preaching team. They are... They are amazing, and this church is blessed. Uh, put your hands together how God has blessed this ministry. In the 111th Psalm, as we continue our preaching series, 60 Days in the Psalms, Scripture reads, verse 1, Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart. In the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. And his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. For the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Verse 5, he provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Let's go down to verse 9. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And all who follow his precepts have good understanding. And here's where I want to hang my hat today. To him belongs eternal praise. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from this thought. There is a praise in the house. Amen. You may be seated. There, there's a praise in the house what what good is a sermon series in the book of psalms if you don't have at least one sermon on the power and the priority of praise amen you see i've come to the understanding that praise is to the believer as butter is to peach cobbler. <clears throat> with, with, without it, 
there is no toe twisting there. You know, there's, there, there's no toe twisting taste. We, we often say when, when we come across a good dish, then boy, she put her foot in that dish. Amen? Well, will I stop by on my way to heaven to say that if your worship is going to be pleasing to God, every now and then you got to put your foot in your worship. You can't just sit there and not move every now and then. Every now and then you got to get and twist. If you don't do it, but twist your little toe. You got to twist something for your worship to mean something to God. Amen. Oh, there ought to be a praise in the house. In both the 111th Psalm and the 112th Psalm, they're both acrostic psalms. I won't go through that terminology because Quincy and Doc dealt with the acrostic terminology in their sermons where every letter of the Hebrew alphabet is in both of these psalms. But, but these, these psalms, uh, they, they both start off with praise the Lord. And, and we don't know who wrote these powerful twins of praise. We don't know who wrote them, but, but we, we, we believe that we know the motive. The psalmist steps out on the stage of worship and says emphatically, with no apology, praise the Lord. In other words, when you think about all that God has done, when you think about all that God is doing, when you think about all that God's getting ready to do, you can't do anything but have a praise come out of your mouth. Have I got a witness in this place? I mean, is there a praise in the house? I love the way the legendary Dorothy Norwood put it. She says, when there's a praise in the temple, and a praise in the house, you can usher in the spirit and move the devil out. You ever heard her sing that song? God will open up a window and a blessing he'll pour out when there's a praise in the temple and a praise in the house. There ought to be someone here today that came because God has done something so phenomenal in your life that there ought to be a praise in your mouth. When you look at this 111th Psalm, I could spend all day in just the first verse. For in just the first verse alone, there are some steps to the dynamics of praise. One verse. One verse. Here it is. Praise the Lord. I will extol, when meaning praise, I will praise the Lord with all my heart. That's all verse 1. There, right there, uh, is a descriptive of the dynamics of what praise should look like. The Hebrew word for praise is tehillah, which means to esteem, to applaud, to glorify, to celebrate, to honor, to exalt. Praise is usually given to everything and everybody. We all, we love the praise people. Amen. But we got to make sure that this praise in this text is another whole dimension. Amen. I said this praise in this text is far above any praise we could give any entertainer or any person or anything. This is a praise that have, or I should say that that will have a divine dimension to it. For it is the articulation of one's adoration for God's amazing appropriations and his salvation. Y'all write that down. Huh? Let me say it again. For praise is what? It is the articulation of one's adoration of God's appropriations and his salvation. That, that, that's why we praise him. That's, that's why we come to the 9 o'clock service. We don't, we don't come to get it over with. We come to get it on. I, I wish I had somebody that came just to get it on. <laughs> Hallelujah up in here. There's a praise in the house. I feel it in my spirit. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah up in here one more time. Come on. Ah, yes. Yes. I think it's Ariane. Ariane sings a song with our worship team, our dynamic worship team. And she says that praise is a weapon 
Uh huh. But 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 I, I want to share with you that there's there's a, another dimension to praise. For for this, when praises go up, the scripture says Shabbat, Shabbat. The Hebrew word Shabbat said that when praises go up, a blessings come down. So not only is praise a weapon, but praise is also a window. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Now see, when you praise God, windows of blessings open up for you. I said, is there a praise in the house? So not only do we understand the definition of praise, to honor, to applaud, to extol, uh, to exalt, but I want you to look at this whole decision to praise. All in verse 1, the psalmist said, I will. <laughs> see, I, I, I can only speak for me. Uh, I, and I, I'm sorry you sat next to me today because I might get so excited. You're going to wish you had sat on another side of the church. Because, But I will. When I think about the goodness of the Lord to me, I will. So there's a decision here. There, there, there's a decision here in the text. And, and, and I know I told you that we don't know who wrote the 111th Psalm or the 112th Psalm, but it sounds like David to me. Well, Pastor, why do you say that? Because in the 34th Psalm, David says, I will bless the Lord at what? At all times. And his praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. So when you start talking about praise, you got to look at David. Da David is the one that knew how to praise the Lord until his clothes would fall off. Da David, David has so much to be thankful for. Have I got somebody in here that God has brought you from a mighty long way? And you're not ashamed. You don't care who's sitting next to you. But I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord. You may not, but I will. I said there is a praise in the house. If it's nothing but my praise, there's a praise in this house today. Hallelujah up in here. Amen. And then he says something else in, in, in Psalm 16. Verse 7, he said, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. I like that. Can you put that on the big screen for me? Psalm 16 and verse 7. I want them to see that. The King James Version. I want them to see this. Psalm 16 and verse 7. This bless my spirit as I was looking. Here again, David is talking. Verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Look at what he says, huh? It says, for my heart also instructs me in the what? In the night seasons. In other words, when, when I go through my seasons of darkness, ah, I wish I had somebody come on, go with me here now. David says, I will bless the Lord even in my night seasons, those times when it's difficult to pray, those times when you feel depressed and despondent and you wonder how you're going to get through anybody ever been there those times when your tears outnumber your smiles yeah yeah yo, when your clouds hang so low you can't even see the road anybody been there it's hard to praise God in the night seasons but David declares that the devil is a lie that when times get difficult somewhere in that darkness I'm going to find a way to praise the Lord. Have I got the witness in this place? I will bless the Lord at all times. Somebody shout all times. Good times. Bad times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Lean times. Times of surplus. I will bless the Lord at all times. When I'm by myself or when I'm with somebody else, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Yes, there's a praise. There's a praise, I believe. I said there's a praise in the house. Hallelujah. So we know what praise is. And we know, amen, the decision we must make to praise him. Well, let me tell you about the direction of your praise. I'm still in just verse 1, y'all. I, I, I will bless the Lord. Have I got a witness in this place? I will bless the Lord. We have to be, pray, be, be careful how we use our praise. 
We really do. We have to be careful how we use those terms. We need to mean them from our heart. I think I told you the story before of the man who, a man was training his horse and trying to teach his horse to obey uh, him when he was riding him. And he said, I got to give this horse some words so that when I say this word, he'll do that. And when I say that word, he'll do that. So the man was very religious. We all know religious people. So he came up with a couple of religious statements to use in training his horse. He trained the horse to go on the command of praise the Lord. And he taught his horse to stop on the command of hallelujah. And one day he was riding his horse. <laughs> and something startled the horse. Don't know what started it, but the horse just took off. And he couldn't get hold of the reins. And he, well, he didn't know what to do. And he said, he, so he started trying to think of those religious words that he had, he had taught his horse. And uh -huh, he, he, he started screaming, Jesus. The horse kept going. He said, uh, uh, Jesus saves. The horse kept on going. He said, holy. The horse kept on going. He said, good God. The horse kept on going. Nothing worked. And finally, finally, as the horse was about to approach the precipice of a cliff, he said, hallelujah. And the horse stopped. He wiped his brow and said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Be careful how you use the praise of the Lord. Because if you really don't mean it, it'll get you in a lot of trouble. But I heard David say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth into all generations and his truth endureth 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 to all generations my God in just one verse we see the definition my God we see the direction and we see we must make a decision to praise God. But here's the last thing I want to share with you. He says, I will extol the Lord with my heart. Ah, you got to know the depth of your praise. God is tired of lip service. There ought to be some depth to your praise. I mean, it ought to come from not just your mind. I mean, yeah, your mind helps you think of the goodness of the Lord. But when you begin to praise God, it ought to come from your heart. Have I got a witness in this place? It, it ought to be. A, see, that's why I stopped watching all those gospel singing programs where they're giving out awards. Because those folk are putting on a show. Huh? They're just putting on a show. Until Shirley Caesar get on there. And Shirley Caesar have church. And she don't care who's out there. Have I got a witness? I, I love it too. I was watching the show the other day and Tamla Mann came on. And Tim the man stood back and said, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. I don't know the rest of the words, but she sang that song. It's my offering. Oh, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. But when she sang that song, the crowd was like, oh my God, she having church. And that's the way it ought to be. When you come into this place, it ought not be that you came to get service over with. No, there ought to be a praise in your spirit. You ought to think of something God has done for you. It ought to come from your heart. 
How about got into heart worshipers up in here today? People that know if it had not been for God. Anybody heart worships up in here today? Someone that knows genuine praise, genuine praise that comes from the heart because his wisdom is above all wisdom. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Young men shall utterly fall. But they, I wish I had somebody, that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall not up with weeds, that's the horse. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Have I got a witness in this place? I dare you to wait on him. Won't he come through for you? Oh, and God is faithful. Isn't he faithful? Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Morning by morning, your mercies are new. Great is thy faithfulness. There ought to be a praise in the house. Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? I said, isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? Come on, don't fool me there. Isn't he all right? Won't God bless you? Won't he make a way? There ought to be a praise in the house. Somebody ought to have something to thank God for. Hallelujah. Don't. don't have much to bring. Yeah. Yeah. My heart is torn to pieces. But it's my, it's my offering. Yes, take me. Lay at the throne. Leave me there alone. To gaze upon your glory. praise in your temple and a praise in your house you can usher in the spirit you can drive the devil out God will open up a window and a blessing he'll pour down There's a praise in your temple and a praise in your house. Hallelujah. Him eternal praise. I will give him eternal praise.
Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. And you are. You are born. Down the street of my life. And I live. I live my life. I will praise him all the days of my life. There's a praise in this house. Hey. tradition we say the doors of the church are open in other words this is an opportunity for you to make the most important decision you'll ever make in your life a decision to be in relationship I'm not talking about membership I'm talking about a relationship with the Christ the gift of Christmas that is your opportunity, very softly. You have an opportunity to make that decision right now, right here, at this moment, to receive the greatest gift ever given to mankind. See, you know why there's a praise in the house? Because so many here already have received Christ. That's why there's a praise in the house. And, and we know what he means to us. But you can have that same relationship. And after the relationship, then comes the membership. But you got to first make a decision. And say, you know what? I want a relationship with that gift that came as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. That gift that grew up and went to Calvary. That group. That, that, that man, rather, that, that, that gift, rather, that died on the cross, that gift that now sits with the Father that's coming back for those that believe in him, I want that gift. That gift. Yesterday, about this time, the church was full of people at a home-going service. And I preached to them about the gift, the perfect gift. And I share with them that this gift you can't find on Amazon. And this gift you don't need a gift receipt. Because you'll never have to return it. The gift is available to you right now. And then you will have a praise in your house. Amen. So why don't you come right now just... Just say, hey, I'm going to go down, and I don't understand all that Jesus stuff. The one thing I do know is that I can't do this by myself. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have some children that are coming to the Lord. Is there anyone else that's ready to give their life to Christ? These children are in our children's church, and so they'll probably come to a knowledge of Christ, and that's why they stayed up today. They want to come down and acknowledge and give their lives to Christ. And so come on, put your hands together, church, for these babies that... But there may be some others here right now. I mean, God has been speaking to you, and he wants you to come. There's no greater time to give your heart to Jesus than at this time of Advent. Will you reciprocate his gift to you by giving you him or by giving him you? Give him you? Would you come? Would you come?